All right, for this we're going to delve in a little bit more into how Google Groups works. And so I've got my Google Groups open and I'm going to go ahead and enter my group, um, excuse me, my Mr. Cross test group here. And you see I have a, I have one category set up. Um, I've got a description of it and inside that category um, I've got it to where people are already beginning to make posts and that's good. Um, when you have, when you're in your, your test group, your Google group, you can go to manage. And when you click on manage, this is where you're going to have a lot of options. And these options are everything from uh, members to how the website looks and reacts to the roles different people have, uh, quite a few different things. So I'm just kind of, kind of walk you through it a little bit. So first of all, the under the members tab here, all members is everybody that belongs to this group. Um, you can invite members and you simply do that by just typing in an email address into this section here. Maybe write them a little message like I'm inviting you to this group and maybe tell them why. And then when you hit send invites, that's going to go to their email box, then they're going to be able to click on it and they'll be invited into that group. Um, you can just directly add members. So if you know already who you would like in your groups, you can go ahead and just click those uh, email addresses in there and they will actually be um, a member right away. If uh, if it's a no email subscription options are set as a default, they will not get an email about this. They'll just be a part of it. Um, so you'll have to. We'll we'll talk in a second about these email options, and you can kind of see what might fit. Um, the outstanding invites. This would be everybody that you've invited that has not accepted. And then you have join requests. So these are people that are from the outside that have seen your blog or your your uh, forum and they want to join it. And this is this will be where they can actually uh, request membership. But they you may not grant it to them. You may uh, do it. You may you can do it a couple different ways. One would be that you could. Um, have all of your students request to join and you can go in through here and just accept them or you can type in their email addresses and have them um, just be automatically accepted. It's kind of what you feel comfortable with. It's, uh, it's a little bit of work either way. Um, email options. So um, this kind of has a couple options for how that you can actually post to these forums via email. So you can actually just send an email to an address and it will actually make a post to your forum. So right here it says to post to this group, send an email to this big ugly email address. And when you do, be this big ugly email address, when you send it to that, that would automatically post to the forum. So that's kind of how that works if you um, want to do something like that. Um, identity. If you want to use, there's there's two different identities for the forum. One would be your uh, actual account name, your Google account name, your real name. The other would be a, uh, a Google profile account name. So there's kind of two different options for how you might want to uh, set that up. If it's your Google profile name, they could make it, uh, you know, something funny like Fuzzy Bunny number 28 or something like that. But if you want it to be more formal, you want it to be the students' names, you would change it to Google profile only and that would help with that. Moderation. Um, you don't have to be the only one that actually monitors what's going on with uh, these um, these posts. As they come in, you can set the posts to automatically just show up, or you can say that they go through a moderation process, which means when a post is created, somebody has to approve the post to be posted. Um, and you can make students those moderators. So you can take some of your trustworthy students and tell them to moderate the forum. So what they'll do is they keep kind of a, they kind of police it a little bit to make sure that everything is appropriate. For the most part, you're not going to have to do that. But if you have a, uh, maybe a student run forum where the students are actually creating a lot of the content, this may be something you want to do if it's something you're not going to be checking in on all the time, just to make sure that they're not uh, abusing it. Um, new members, so um, until they've actually been, um, until they're actually joined in the group, this determines whether or not they can post to the forum yet. So again, lots and lots of options in this. It's, um, it's forums are very, very complex. Once you get them set up, they work really smooth, but in order to get there, you're gonna have a lot of these little options. Tagging really is not gonna help you too much. You can create tags. It's the keywords and the phrase that are gonna allow it to be searched a little easier. Um, probably not gonna use that too much, but if you do, um, this is where you would enable the tagging feature. Um, 
categories. So we've already talked in, the, in part one about this a little bit. This is where you're going to create all of the different categories and subcategories to be used um, uh, in your site. So I had created one category called the universe. That So now all the posts would be inside of that one category topic. I could create a uh, category group called the universe and then inside of that group create subcategories like the planets and the solar system and galaxies and those would be subcategories of that group so it allows you to really make this as large or as small as you want then we have um, our permissions we're going to just go right to our permissions here so this is the basic permissions of the website and this is kind of an important thing to look at so for instance we have um, view topics so this is if they want to view the topics in the site right now it's set to all members of the group so if they've been approved as a member they would get to view the posts that are within there managers of the group pretty much are always going to be able to view it so it just kind of works down if you click anyone it is public on the web that means anybody can see that um, post as long as they have the link to get to this this form so that's kind of how um, you can control a little bit of it if you said that I only want the managers to be able to view you would just unclick that it would make it to where the managers can view it um, posting so this is who can post to your forum right now it's set to all members of the group so those are the people that can actually write and create posts if I wanted this to be for viewing only I would unselect that now the managers can post but everybody else would only be able to view so all members of the group would be able to view hence this permission but they wouldn't be able to post if I make the posting permission like that now they can actually post as well and this is join the group so who can join the group only invited users anyone anyone can ask so if you think about it this way if somebody stumbles upon the website and they ask to be a part of your group you could allow them to probably not going to work for education um, and then invited users that would be so everybody that you put in the email address and it sent them that email saying hey join my group that's probably the the best way to going and then there's this anyone option which means anybody in the world could just sign up and be a part of the group and comment and there might be times where that can be useful. You would have to decide how that's going to work in your classroom. Though. Um, posting permissions. So here we go. So this is um, more in depth, um, and I'm not going to go into each of these because there's there's a lot of different options. So. Um, if you allow students to post to these forums, you can control all kinds of, of different things. So you can tell them, you know, who can add, um, who can assign topics, who can attach files, who can um, post announcements, which means it's like a, uh, it would be a post that's always on top. Uh, it would be the highest level post that you can do. So there's a lot of these different options and uh, you know this is kind of just a, an added thing. The basic options will pretty much cover you but if you were really needing a need because you're a power user of this, this is where you're going to find it. Uh, moderation permissions. So again, I told you you could create moderators. The moderators have the power to approve or, or disapprove of posts and they can even ban users so they can stop users from even using your group. So if you use moderators, you would go through here and set them up uh, according to what you feel they would need. And then we've got access permissions. So again, this is um, you know more stuff so who can contact the owner of the group you can say anyone in the whole world can contact the owner of the group in this case it would be me or you can filter it down um, and, and make it more restricted uh, you can filter topics so you could if uh, if you had a mess of topics and maybe some students weren't needing those topics they were only needing a few topics they could actually filter them out so if you select and say that all all members of the group can filter topics they would be able to actually turn those topics off so they don't actually see them when they access it again probably not going to be used too much these are kind of some more advanced settings that I just wanted you to know they're there but you may not actually use them then we also have this thing called roles the roles is very interesting because we can right now we're set up with uh, owner, manager, and member, and those are the three that you can't actually get rid of. But you could create a student role, for instance, and under the student role, you could 
create permissions and you can tell them what they can do. So a student might be able to do certain things and you can right here assign all of the different options that students would be able to do uh, right from one um, quick little setup. And then anytime you have a new student you would assign them that role as a student and they would have all of those permissions um, therein. Um, so this is kind of some just basic stuff again. You're going to deal mostly with the members and the inviting of the members to actually get your, your uh, forums up and running. But I wanted you to be aware of some of the other options that were available um, in this really, really well thought out uh, software. And I know this seems fairly complicated. This is much, much easier than what a traditional forum will put you through. So it's a really great way to get started with this sort of thing. And uh, I look forward to seeing how you might use it in your classrooms.